Welcome, everybody. My name is Barbara Luzna. I'm with SMB for Vernon Success Sales Development. I'm very pleased to have you all here today. We are here to hear, we are here to hear successful customer stories about transformation into the club. And it is my absolute pleasure to welcome Linda Bear from Purdue University. Linda is here to talk about their transformation of employee experience with Success Factor Solutions and SAP Preferred Success. Linda, thank you very much. I want to thank everybody, and I'm very excited about sharing our journey. I call it a journey of how we partnered with SAP to help us be successful in what we feel is a world class onboarding experience. But first, I want to talk a little bit about our of Purdue and who are we. So, Purdue is um, a, a high, very exciting place to live, uh, work, and live in that area. We actually impact student lives, we enhance our community around us, and we actually help solve our global problems and challenges. As a Boilermaker, when you work at Purdue, you're a Boilermaker, we understand that what we do has significance and impact. And in fact, others, it actually can be tied up in two really good words, excellence and innovation. Purdue is recognized by others as one of the top 10 universities for innovation. We have done that for many, many years. So it's a very dynamic, innovative environment to work in. The other thing that Purdue is really trying to focus on is accessibility and affordability to our students. So for the last 11 years, we've had no tuition increases. So as you can imagine, that really impacts your bottom line. So we have to be transformative and innovative how to do our work. In fact, we have grown research and increased our community impact in the area. The other thing is we also have, um, we have saved families collectively over a billion dollars since 2012. But as you can imagine, having that kind of economical impact to our families, our enrollment has increased. We have increased 21% in enrollment since 2016. So we're very well known for that. The other thing we are doing is we're doing transformative education experiences for our students. We are highly sought after. Our Purdue degree is very valued. Employers are seeking out our graduates. And we have set records for our newly hired graduates in receiving higher admin average salary starts. But most recently in 2021, Purdue was also receiving one of its highest accolades. It was listed in the Fast Companies, the brand that matters. And that's very, very important to us because we feel at Purdue, we are innovative, we're transformative. It's an exciting place to work. What we did after we implemented our success factors, and as we looked over the last several years, we really wanted our human resources experience, our new hires, our employees experience, to be the same as our students. And so we partnered with SAP through the Preferred Success Partnership. And when we did that, we really did it with a very strong core strategy. We felt for them to be partners with us, they have to understand us totally. So what we wanted to make sure is they understood our vision. They know where we want to go, when we want to go there, and they really are strong partners to help us get there. And so how do we do that? What we do is on a quarterly basis, we invite our partners in to meet with our executives and our directors. And we share with them what our vision is, what our core objectives are, what our goals are for the next year at least. They partner with us and help prioritize those. We talk about challenges we might face and innovation that we might need to have. In addition to that, Chris, who's one of my partners, comes and meets with us, she meets with us on a bi-weekly basis. And we do several things in those meetings. And we have representatives from IT, from our, all of our HR areas. And what we do is we do several things. First, we talk about issues. 
What issues are we having in the system with our processes? We talk about, are we getting answers to our questions? If not, we escalate it, we get help escalating it so that we have quick resolution. But secondly, and more importantly to me, is I don't know how everybody else's organization is, but our organization, our employees are so busy doing the operational stuff day to day, they don't take the time to look out there to say what's coming at us, what's gonna be new, what should I be paying attention to? But in those meetings, what happens is it is pointed out because our partners already know our vision. They already know where we wanna go. And so what they do in that meeting, we have discussions about, we wanna pay attention to this innovation that's coming out. It's gonna impact you. You might wanna pay attention to this. This is where you wanna go. Make sure your employees are, are taking the webinars and educating themselves. There are some releases that might impact us negatively, so we need to pay attention to our processes. <clears throat> so all of that occurs on a bi-weekly basis, which builds that strong, strong relationship that helps us along the way. So what happened as we started doing this, as I already said, we really wanted to build a human and resource employee relationship and experience that was as strong as the student experiences Purdue. So back in 2019, we launched an employee engagement survey and we started asking questions about what would be the best working environment for you? Now we're a very diverse school. We have 13 colleges, we have three regionals and we have extension offices across the state. As you can imagine, opinions vary, practices vary. Some are very good and some are pretty bad, right? So as we started going through that feedback, all of a sudden what happened? The pandemic happened, right? COVID hit and most of our employees went remote. So our one day orientation wasn't gonna cut it. And we had to really take a strong look at that because we had people that were 100% remote, we had people that were 100% on site, and we had people that were hybrid. And so we launched our strategic initiative that was looking at what should that new employee experience be? And that started us on our journey. As we get to any journey or initiative, I'm sure most of you do this. You do some research. You start researching. You start looking for best practices. What are our opportunity and options out there? And that's what we started to do. But we also started asking ourselves two key questions. If we could deliver a world-class onboarding experience, what would it look like? And if we could deliver that, what would be the impact to the university? And so we collaboratively brought forward and created what we called it a champion network. It was representative, 30, about 30, 35 representatives across the university, all you know, types of employees, all areas. And we started working through that. What are our challenges? What should we include? And through that, we really built and designed what we felt should be in our new employee experience. <clears throat> and as we looked at that, we came up with four core objectives. The first was connectivity. We really found research show, the earlier you connect with that employee, engage with that employee, the longer you're gonna retain them and the more value they'll be. So we had connectivity that we want to build our program that we connect from recruiting and we take them and connect and support them throughout their first year experience. The next was culture. We felt very proud to be a Boilermaker. We felt it was important for all of our new hires to understand what the value was of being a Boilermaker and be prideful of their work. So we built into our program some of that. 
We also talked about clarity and by clarity we mean, do you know what your job is? Do you know what your expectations are? And how do you impact your department that you work for and the university as a whole? I was recently at a CHIRM, and if everybody knows what CHIRM, CHIRM is Society for HR Managers Conference, and the keynote speaker said the best thing we can do is to bring that employee up to productivity levels fast and quick and efficient. So that's what we want to do. And finally, we talked about community. And community is a couple things. One, it really is connecting that employee to other employees and groups within the campus so they have a sense of community and belonging. But it also belong, has that we, they need to understand the complexity of what the university does, the impact, and the compliance issues we have. So they understand how to work within that environment. So our program builds all of this into it. We really wanted our employees to have a sense of confidence in their work and life and know they were valued. We prioritize well-being, work-life balance, and career development, and feel that our program will drive and create a working environment that is stimulating, energizing, and affirming to them. Our goals are that we increase our employee satisfaction, that we reduce turnover, build a stronger commitment to the organization, and really have a valued employee and retain them for a long period of time. <clears throat> so we took quite a while and we designed our program. And then we went out and we engaged with our preferred success partners. We sent them the recommendation, the design document, and we said, help us. Help us to utilize technology. Help us to automate and technology and streamline our processes. And so that's what we did. Those partners went and shared it with functional specialists in all areas of onboarding and learning. They reviewed our document and came back to us with a proposal to say, these are the areas of the system we think will best suit you. They met with us. We spent quite a bit of time talking it through with them. We assessed the recommendation and then implemented it as much as we could. The good thing was, as you know, when you implement something, you don't always have everything going streamlined. Does it always go like you planned? And our experience is no, right? There's always a tweak that might be off. And so those functional specialists were made available to us to go back to say, mm, this isn't exactly what I wanted. And they helped us to get there. So they were a very, very strong partnership with us throughout this whole process. So now that we have the technology and we started implementing and working through that, our team started thinking about how do we operationalize this? So I'm not sure if you're like me, but when I go out on a website or try to learn something, I'm bing, 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 I'm all over the place trying to figure out, well, this isn't where I think it should be. Where is it? So what we created was a portal for our new hires and our supervisors. It's a one-stop shop on our HR website. <coughs> Those new at Purdue, and they go there. It will be a link and a step-by-step -step approach. It helps them understand where they have to go. That's the only place they need to go on our HR website because everything else is linked from there. It's a concierge desk if you want to think about that. But what's great, it directly links into our Success Factors program where we house our, our room. I'll show you what we've done within LMS and how that works. We've teamed with our stakeholders and, and the important groups. We increased our communication, our workflow. Some of the system enhancements we built out and are using, utilizing the learning management system as our hub. We've also done some other system enhancements that include mentoring, 
professional development, and some other onboarding things we enhanced. So we realized and we leveraged that technology to help us build what we feel is a very streamlined program for our employees to come through. What were some of the system enhancements we did? <laughs> so the first thing we know is our onboarding um, experience. A couple things we did. The first thing our employees will see is a welcome email from Purdue. And then they're linked into what we call the new hire data collection piece, where we have to start gathering stuff to complete employment verification. We start collecting things like banking and tax information. <clears throat> but one of the things, remember, we said we wanted to help build the culture and start pushing that culture out. So through the recommendation of our functional specialists, what we did was we enhanced our onboarding panels and our experience. So as that new employee first interaction with our system is coming in, what we're doing is we're linking to various articles about Purdue, to policies about Purdue, and everything that we think all employees at Purdue should understand and get a sense for. The other thing is we hire a lot of international employees, one of the largest group of employees throughout any higher education. And there's a lot of extra steps they need to do as they're an international employee coming up. So we built logic into the system that said, if during that first piece of onboarding, they tell us they are not a US citizen, we built logic so the system immediately notifies our international tax area. They then can take that information and further reach out to that employee and help them through the process. Finally, what we did is also we, we updated our new hire activities. As you can see some screenshots, we've added to our listing. We, we wanna talk about well-being, so we link them to our Center for Healthy Living. We wanted to make sure they felt engaged. We asked the department to put out a welcome message that pops up on then employee's home screen first time they log in when they're hired and started working. We wanted to make sure that the department people understand that we have a new hire coming in because it's no longer, oh, you know, Jane came in, she's a new hire today. No, everybody's remote. So what do you do if they're remote? You have to make sure that they understand you got a new hire and you ask them to reach out. So we enhance this experience for our onboarding coordinators and for individuals in the department to ensure that we have consistent engagement going on. At the university, um, several years ago, we moved to an annual performance and goals process that's within success factors. And it's really driven by goals, which is a little bit different than what we used to do. And so one of our goals is that in this program, is we, in the first 30 days, we help employees understand how to do the self-service and how to start building their goals. So part of our new at Purdue program says, you will, with your supervisor, enter your 30, your 60, and your 90 day goals. You'll learn how to do it. You'll have that conversation. We are building within our new at Purdue, we ask our supervisor to be more coaches than actually just dictating or not talking to our employees. So that was something that we did. And we ended up being very successful in the use of the program. This is the key to the whole program is our learning management system. It's really our, we've built a program within LMS the welcome portal drives them to this program. This program helps build through welcome week all the way through their first year experience. We have built in here a lot of drive and step-by-step. -step. It's self-paced. We have a similar one that's not as detailed for a supervisor. So the supervisor goes through the same thing the new employee does. They can monitor where that employee is at all times. 
They, in our supervisor one, we built in guides for them to know at what point should you be having these conversations. And it's a pull type activity, so that employee pulls that information. We've created themes through all of this, talking about Boilermaker experience, community, compliance issues, resources. So it's all laid out. We've used multimedia to do different things. So we do text, we do coursework, we do videos, because we know people learn in a lot of different ways. And so we've tried to do it sequentially as they're coming on board, we have different things coming out to them. So it's not, let's just do a data dump on top of you your first day of hire. We've marketed and we, and we partnered with marketing in our university. So we have videos applied within this program throughout the year. Some are talking about the, the university. Some are talking about diversity and inclusion. Some are talking about with an employee that might have worked there and how do they connect and enhance their career. <laughs> Mentoring is one of the new things we also put into effect. We've had success factors since 2019 and never used this functionality. So one of the things we learned is we really wanted in this program to build some connection, especially if you're a remote worker. How do you connect with other people other than your direct peers? So we built a mentoring program that the system allows us to put some structure and guidelines through. And so after 30 days of coming on board, we, hire, we connect you with a mentor. We have built mentoring guides. We have built training for that mentor in the LMS. And we have that going on throughout for several months in their program. They are there to be an advocate for that employee and to help that employee navigate, not only through the system, but through the processes of the organization. As we built this, as I talked about, we looked at um, research. We used SHRM as a building block for what we needed to do. And we really want our employees to have a great experience. We want them to be energized. We want them to be feel like they have a path for career development. They need to have organizational commitment. And as we built on these SHRM standards, we feel we built all of this into our program. And so we're, our goal in our program is to be at a level three status for the SHRM gold standards. About 20% of employers ever reach the level three. We feel we are very close to that and that we will be able to achieve it based on the partnership. We feel we will engage, we will increase satisfaction, we will reduce turnover. And as we've experienced in one of the first series we rolled this out last fall, was in one of the areas that has one of our highest turnover rates, our administrative facility custodial area. Now for them, we could not do a one-on-one -on -one mentoring, but we did what we call mentoring circles. And so everybody that was hired within a month was put in one certain mentoring circle. We had a, several mentors in the group. We would meet with them every two weeks. We actually started once a month and they meant and they Employees asked if we could meet more regularly. So we moved that to every two weeks. In those circles, they were engaged with their supervisor. They were engaged with the mentors. And after the program, very, very high ratings on the satisfaction of that program. But most importantly, what we did was we compared the retention of those employees after the program this past year so far. And what we saw was a 22% increase in retention, which was huge to that department. And so we continue to measure. We have feedback evaluation loops throughout the program for the mentors, for the employees, and the supervisors. We feel we will reach this level three gold standard. But we could not have done this without our partnerships along the way. 
We feel that this, we are very proud to be boiler makers. And if you're not aware that a boiler maker really, the metaphor for them is that they are a person who is working in a big team, trying to accomplish something so big, they cannot accomplish it themselves. And we believe that's us in this program. And the partnership we had through the Preferred Success Pro Partnership Program helped us get where we are today. I want to thank them. I want to thank Chris for me and my partner. And um, we, we just couldn't be more thrilled than what we've got going so far. So I want to open it up for any questions that anybody may have, um, whether it's on our program or on the partnership and how we make it work. I can kick it off a question regarding your onboarding. Did you use the pre-start portal or are you on onboarding 1.0 or 2.0? We're onboarding 1.0 and we don't have the pre-start portal open yet. So on your we had a security issue. When we started our project back and launched in 2019, our security team did not want to open it up to the pre-start order. So we have not opened that yet, but we use onboarding 1.0 to do everything we're doing. Do you have plans to go to onboarding 2.0? Yeah, we're hoping. Chris and I were talking about that today. Yes, we're hoping to be able to do that. And my goal would be to open up the pre-start portal. Okay, thanks. Have you done pre -start? We're on the pre-start portal. Okay. And we're hearing mixed things about onboarding 2.0. Mm -hmm. We were advised to really watch very closely what we've decided to do. Um, so I would like some feedback on onboarding 2.0 uh, for some customers on that. Um, so that's something I'm looking to get feedback on. But what you were showing looks similar to the pre-start portal. So that's what I was asking. What core system are you on? We're on success faster, it's all on the modules. You're on Play Central? Mm -hmm. We're on everything. So okay, I didn't know if you were. Yeah. When we implemented everything, we implemented all of the modules at one time. Okay. <laughs> Which I think is a good approach. It's a lot of work, but I think it integrates all of the information from a point of position, your foundation information, all the way through recruiting, all the way back to Play Central. Okay. I wasn't sure if you had implemented it all or you were just talk talking today about what these yeah, two areas. No, okay. We have, we have it all. Okay. Thanks. Question. I'll take your contact and we'll yeah, we can talk through that. Other questions? No other questions in the room? This should be open to questions online. Do we uh, have questions online? Yeah, we do. Um, how did the relationship with preferred success impact the overall bottom line for Purdue? So what we have found is we, with that partnership, we would not have been able to do that. So as we start tracking our metrics, the bottom line will be a huge success if we can you know, increase our retention, reduce training. The other thing is whenever we have any issues, um, you know, the help in resolving those issues and escalating when we need to is, is been instrumental in our ability to do operational things like just paying our payroll. Um, we are many times in critical situations that they have helped. Um, the other thing is that we have a lot of concurrent employees. And so as we work through that concurrent employee the way we set it up, it's very manual sometimes and, and as people move here and there. And so it's been instrumental. We've been working with a consultant to review that and look at that. Um, and we're very close to a solution that we think will save us hours and hours and hours of manual, reducing manual effort for us. Are there any other questions? Um, so Linda, it's amazing that you were able to partner with Chris who could facilitate, you know, functional specialists to um, help you build out a plan for your mm -hmm. transformation, right? So um, beyond that, how do you see your teams being uh, prepared to take this further, right? Um, in being self-sufficient and you know building your own um, knowledge base or you know skill set in your team. So, what, can you speak to maybe what your plans are sure. on that front? So, as we what we try to utilize through our program is we try to use any educational material that's coming to us. Many of our employees in the HR business line they have access to that. Um, they have the community. They have, I think, some of the other tools were made available and talked about this morning. We utilize all of that. Will, we, will I say we will ever be without that? I don't see that as a viable solution. 
I'll be honest, because things change too fast. You have to have a partner that's working with you. Um, I know we would be way too busy. We would not be paying attention to the core things that we need to pay attention to. And like I said, I think with our partners understanding our vision and our goals, they help us focus, dream, laser focus on the things that we need to do. And I think that helps us move along fairly quickly. The right. guidance is definitely absolutely. We're very pleased to hear about that. Yeah, absolutely. Because we are just, they're too busy. They, they don't focus where they need. And otherwise, you have to look through everything. So in terms of your support model, can you just share a little bit more about that? Do you have an external partner in addition to SAP? and Or are you using SAP for support consulting for enhancements, upgrades, in addition to preferred success? So our model is we have an IT group that supports us on anything that we can do ourselves. And so they, they work with that. That team works very closely with the partners as we talk about are there things they need to understand or should educate themselves on. If there is something um, within success factors that is our configuration setup that we as a client cannot use, we do have uh, a partner that helped us with our implementation that does work with that. I do know that through our success program, they have taught sometimes. Um, and I found that sometimes they don't always have the solution and we count on the solution from our preferred success program. Okay, thanks. Do we have any other questions? One more. So we yeah, have, okay, we have time for one more question, please. So, um, so just to clarify that, it's on onboarding 1.0? Correct. And uh, the onboarding 1.0, a component of success factor slash EC? Yeah, so um, onboarding is another module to EC. They integrate to each other as you bring that person on board, that information. Then um, once they've completed their uh, task within onboarding and we then push it into ACP, and it's a pretty seamless integration piece. So we have information coming from recruiting, pushes into onboarding, and then onboarding pushes into EC. Wonderful. So Linda, thank you so much. Thank you. It's a fantastic story.